Well, it's welcome to the Tony Awesome Fishing Show. Now then, I don't get too many invites like this, but I got a call to go and cover a netting, a stock netting at Diva Springs Fishery in Hampshire. For those of you who don't know, it's about one of the best places you can ever go to get big trout, giant trout. But in there, within the confines of that water, two lakes in fact, they have pike. No, they don't do pike fishing, they don't do coarse fishing, they do fly fishing only for trout. But on the day of this netting, Stuart, the fishery manager said, how about having a throw with a plug? You've got an hour to an hour and a half before they start the netting. I might get lucky. Let me think about this. Oh yeah, that's a saying. What about giving the kids the keys to the sweet shop? So, down here at Diva Springs, and they're going to be netting all this fish, as I just told you, and the chances are they are going to see some pike. So they said, have a throw here, I'm going to see if I can catch one on a lure. So, check the drag. So obviously I'm going to be casting feverishly, just seeing if I can't catch a pike of any description. I've got to remember how to work this lure, there's a way to actually work it. Now what they're going to do is they're going to net this big lake first. They're going to probably turn up that in first, bring the net right down here. And then, I've got to watch this because they were telling me they come right in close. Now, who knows with the weather conditions. But there might be a big pike in there, might be one big pike. There's certainly pike in here, no question of that. And then they're going to, oh that felt like a bit of a bump. Stop checking on camera. I'm, I'm trying to fish at the same time guys now, I'm trying to feel the lure if that makes sense. I've forgotten my coat, I've forgotten my gloves. Cannot believe it. It's going to be freezing so I won't be lasting too long with this. It's just worth a few casts, isn't it? I've always fancied down this edge here. Now what I do, is I'll just keep working this lure. I've got a big lure on because I've always put a small lure on, I don't want to get a trout. But whether I'm going to get a pike or not remains to be seen. One pike would do. Fancying close to those rushes, people. I'm fancying close to the rushes there. The wind is bitter. Right, change lures. It's got a lead strip on it there. Don't even know what this one's called. Got a, a tail to it, so let's whiz it out there. Cast like a missile. Let it sink a little bit. Don't know what the weed situation's like here. It's quite dark looking the water, I must admit. You come here in the spring and stuff, and it's absolutely as clear as you could ever want. And I wonder how many trout they're going to find on this netting. So a little cast up the side here. Till you get that first hit, you don't really know. And of course, if it's, I can't see the action of the lure, maybe I'm fishing this one a little bit too fast we'll find out in a minute come on boys come on and how long he's gonna stay on holy smoly he's a lively one oh nice fish nice fish guys yes here he comes here he comes let's just get the net Beautiful, you see the lure, he's actually slashed at it and it's just right near the top. He's hooked on the bottom one, I'm gonna watch this other one. Here we go. Nice looking fish, boys. Look at that. Definitely don't need any big tangles. I need to try and get that second hook out of him. 
because it's tangled around. He could go mad. And he does. Here he comes. Here he comes, people. Wow. Look at that. Now, I want to get him around the right way. I got him. Oh, what? They don't need to net them. We got them in here anyway. Get that hook out. There's a lure. And there. Boy, nice. Can you see him? I guess a fish not far short of a double if it had a belly to it. Lovely markings. I'm going to tell you now. My hands are freezing. And away he goes. The result. Uh -huh. To do a stock check, and that's what they're here for, to look over there. They're going to be going down the net all the way down here and bring the net up in here. And we're going to see if we can see what big trout they've got in here, what numbers, and if there's any big pike. Wow, my hands are cold. Cold, cold. I can barely feel them. But let's face it, it's worth it. I think I've got another fish on, guys. I think, I don't know. Yeah, it's a fish. Had to fish this time. Long, long cast out, long cast out. Not a big fish. And this is a smaller pike. Yeah, a lot smaller. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. He slapped at it again. Just hooked underneath. He looks like a jumper to me. Here we go. Oh, I hope we got that one on camera. Beautiful. Just watch those travels, Graham. One hook got him very, very tight, and you can see down there. Look at these teeth. I'm just going to lift that membrane back. You see the real teeth in there further back. And there we go, pike number two on that same lure. What a nice looking fish! So you can see. Big trout and pike can live together in perfect harmony. But that's because they're big trout and the pike can't really eat them, can it? It gives you an idea what's in there. But listen, I had a chance to fish in the smaller lake. I thought I'd get in there before they get the net and the boat down in there. Was it worth a shout? <laughs> yeah. This on a small lake now. Action is action. Check that drag round. Another fast one there. I thought it was a pike coming in, but you can see I'm really, really sort of piling it in. I had a slow retrieve right around those tree roots because I thought if there was going to be a pike before these guys net it, just there, coming across the front of those tree roots. I don't want to go so close to the tree roots that I lose the lure, if that makes sense. Pike's more likely to hit slower retrieve. Go right over the side. Let it sink about maybe a foot, that's all. Guys, I've got a fish on, just slam me. Slam me in close, look at this one. It's a rainbow trout and he's hit this plug. Look at the size of this rainbow. Here he comes. It's a big rainbow, look at the size of that one. Oh my God, and here he comes off. Goodness me, I was cranking that really fast then. 
this on a small lake now. That shows you how predatory these rainbows can be. That lure has got to be what, four and a half, five inches long. And although I'm pike fishing, they will get extremely aggressive on a faster lure. There's the lure. It's got a weight there on its belly and a little squiggly tail, and I'm sure it's the tail that they go for. I would not be surprised if I get another take here. Here we go. I just had a hit. Absolutely just had a hit on it. I seem to like the faster retrieve. Here he comes. Out we go again. Let's try and fan cast here. Just go one, two, three, cover as much area as I can. I don't think there's many pike in here, or as many pike as there used to be uh, in the smaller lakes. We're in the smaller lake now, I won't say, and I think they get a better success rate when they net this one to do the stock check. So they, they had something like 40 plus, I expect Stuart, the fishery manager, will tell us later, 40 something pike, a uh, pike, I wish, 40 something uh, trout in the other lake. Obviously you miss quite a few. There we go. This thing cast like a missile. I'll be halfway to Basingstoke by now. I'm fancying that run along there, guys, because when I've trout fished here, I have seen the odd pike cruising there. Oh, I lost a fish then, boys. Every cast counts here. Just a once in a two or three year slot for maybe an hour or so. And who knows what's in here, we'll find out very shortly when the second batch come round to net. I'm gonna move up here a little bit. Starving, I should have some food, but fingers are frozen. Oh, ain't too old for all this. I'll say that until the rod buckles round and they go, oh, but actually, I'll keep casting. I'm gonna go up here and cast down. Look how wet the ground's been everywhere this winter. It's been a shocker. Good for the underground aquifers. Oh, that is muddy, wow. I don't think I've seen it this muddy. Now here comes the wind again. Oh God, I won't last much longer. We're gonna to have to go back in the clubhouse and warm up, boys. Sorry, but there's only so much a grown man can take. And I'm well, well past my limit, I can tell you. Big fish or no big fish. There used to be some real big pike in there. Gee, where's my fingers are frozen? I think two more casts and I've got to go back. Well, the scene was set, boys. The fishing for me had to stop. I had my hour, hour and a half, and that was it. It was like a once every two to three year chance. But listen, was I pleased I took it. So despite the inclement rain and freezing wind, these guys are out there trying to haul this huge net around the main lake at Diva and try and pull all the fish into one area so they can be counted, checked. They need to know how many browns, how many rainbows, they need to know what the stock is. Every so often they need to do it. And it seems to be about every couple of years they do a stock check. For those of you who don't know, Diva Springs is what we call a put and take fisheries. That means the fish are grown on there, they're brought up to a big size by feed, and then they're stocked into each lake. They're held in stock ponds. This is just a sample of a few of them. A um, lot of fish in there, they keep, well, like so many uh, fisheries, there are thousands of trout fisheries around, I would imagine, in the UK, doing put and take trout fishing. They need high oxygen content in the water, they need cool water. The fish are farmed, they're grown on using high protein pellets like this, feed pellets that are bought by the ton, and believe me, they are expensive. So they use these pellets to bring the fish on, um, they can increase them in size, I don't know what the actual poundage is, but generally the rainbow trout grows faster than the brown trout. And most of the fish nowadays are what they call triploid trout, 
which means they're sterile. I think they heat shock the eggs, or they used to, and look at the size they can get them up to, 23 pounds, 10 ounces, on a fly rod no less. Let's check all this out guys, it's a fantastic fish. Those guys are still hauling on the rope, trying to pull in and see if they can close it so we can see what's in there for the stock check. That gave me a bit of time, didn't it? Obviously, no fishing now because they're doing the netting. Did give me the chance to thaw out. Oh, it was cold, bitter. I wish I hadn't forgot my Helly Hansen jacket and gloves and hat and everything. I got in the clubhouse. Yes, hot bovril that hits the spot every time. Caught by a feeling Blows me on the right or wrong Gets me what I want I'm hanging by a string Gotta get up on my feet Get to what I need and I am Flying through the streets on the wings Once I get to you I don't want anything Girl, I'm so addicted gives you an idea of some of the big fish that can live in there but listen that small lake for me held the biggest secrets let's see how they got on and wait guys just check out the size of some of these trout
I hope you guys did take the trouble to check out the size of those silver browns. No, no, you're not wrong. They are in fact 20 pound brown trout. Gives you an insight into divas fish. You know they're in the lakes there, that's for sure. We'll see you guys again. Don't forget to watch the Totally Awesome Fishing Show, the Totally Awesome, or TA, TA Outdoors as Mike calls it. Both channels, subscribe buttons, like buttons, notification bell. You hit that end, I'll hit this end. And we'll see you guys in the next film.